Understanding Physics, Exponential Decay. This is uh, very important uh, in the second year. It's a mathematical thing. You need to know about it. You'll need to get your head around it. It's not that hard. I've done a few videos on it. This is the first one, Exponential Decay. Consider this. Imagine we have a cylinder which has got water in it and somewhere near the bottom there's a hole and you've got your finger over the hole you take your finger off the hole and the water comes out now what will happen to the depth of the water as time passes what will happen to the depth and if the depth is x and we plot a graph of x against time what will that graph look like and the answer is it will look like that the depth of the water will decay exponentially uh, we're starting at a certain value an initial value in this case 25 centimeters and that will go down and it's a very characteristic curve going down an exponential decay why don't we get a straight line uh, what happens to the rate of change of x which is dx dt the rate of change of x in other words the gradient of the graph and what would the rate of change of x depend on very quickly answering those questions why don't we get a straight line well the water comes out quickly to start with the rate of flow of water is greater so the depth will change quicker at the start why because the the pressure at the bottom of the cylinder will be getting less what happens to the rate of change of x well it gets smaller in fact, the rate of change of x, the gradient, that will also go down exponentially. It will be the same shape. What would the rate of change of x depend on? Well, what will affect how quickly water comes out? Well, it'll be things like the, mainly the size of the hole, really, would be the big thing. But then other stuff, the viscosity of the liquid. Okay, we repeat the experiment, with, but with a larger hole and we get this graph how are the graphs different uh, how are the graphs similar well they start at the same initial value 25 but obviously if the hole is larger then the, the water is going to come out quicker it will also decay exponentially we're getting this curve but obviously it's it's a, a different curve an exponential relationship this is important when the rate of change of a quantity is proportional to its magnitude now I've put two equations here you'll notice the difference between them one's got a negative sign the one on the left we're not bothered with that's an exponential growth the one that we are concerned with is the one with the minus that's an exponential decay dx dt equals minus kx dx dt is proportional to x the rate of change of x is proportional to x how quickly x is changing is proportional to how big it is okay dx dt is the rate of change of x it's the slope of the graph it's how quickly x is changing in in the case of the water it would be centimeters per second okay x is the actual depth k is a constant and I'm calling it the decay constant uh, that will depend on the size of the hole and the viscosity of the liquid and perhaps one or two other things as well but it's the constant in the equation we call it the decay constant Here's another example. Imagine we had a thousand die or dice and we roll them all uh, and all the ones that land on a six, we take them away and we do that again and again and again. And the number of die is N and the number of throws is T. What would a graph of N against time look like? In other words, the number of die that we have left against time, what would it look like? And this is an experiment we actually do and the answer is it should look like something like this again is this characteristic exponential decay we're starting with a certain value in this case it's a thousand 
and we get this characteristic curve. Should we get an exponential decay? Well, the rate of change of n is dn dt. In this case, that will be how many dice are taken away every throw. Now, will the number of dice taken away be proportional to the number of dice? And the answer is, well, yes, it will. The more dice you've got, the more sixes you roll, the more sixes you will take away. So dn dt, if t is the number of throws, dn dt will be proportional to n. It will be an exponential decay. Okay. Uh, what does the rate of change of n depend on? It depends on n. It's proportional to n. The points don't fit the curve perfectly in this case. Why not? Uh, and that's because throwing a dice is a random process. We can only say that the, the probability of rolling a six is one in six. But, you know, whether you're going to roll, a, if you roll six dice and get one six, is that going to happen every time? No, because it's a random process. OK, how could we get a better fit? Well, we could use more dice. If we use 10,000 or 100,000 dice, we would get a smoother curve because all of this randomness would be smoothed out if we have a very large number of dice. So dn dt equals minus kn. dn dt is the rate of change of n. It's how many dice are removed each throw. If you like, delta n is negative. It's the number of dice removed. n is going down. Uh, k, my decay constant in this case, is the probability that a dice will be removed. And if we're taking all the sixes away, then it'll be one sixth, one over six. That will be my decay constant. What are the units of k in this equation? Well, if dn dt is a number per throw, uh, and then on the right hand side, that, that must mean the units have to be the same, or at least equivalent. So the units of k will be throws to the minus one. Very often the, the units of k are, are some time, unit of time to the minus one, seconds to the minus one, or years to the minus one, or months to the minus one. Some unit of time to the minus one is the units of k. Here's another characteristic of exponential decay. Um, the time it takes for the quantity to halve is constant. And this is something that you should remember from GSE, GCSE. And the time it takes, or the number of throws it takes, for the quantity to halve, uh, my friend Gordon down there, he knows that that is called the half-life. So uh, on this graph here, which is the, the depth of water against time in the cylinder, the time it takes for the depth to halve is 14 seconds. That's from 25 to 12 and a half, or from 10 to 5, or from 20 to 10. The time it takes for the quantity to halve is constant. I'll just add as a little stretch and challenge to the end of there. The time it takes to go down by any fraction is actually constant. It doesn't have to be a half. Here's a question you can have a go at. Uh, on Monday morning, a prisoner is given a kilogram of cheese, a very nutritious cheese. He decides that every day he will eat a third of however much cheese he's got. Um, so calculate how much cheese he has left at the beginning of each day that week. Uh, what would a graph of how much cheese he's got left, what would it look like? Explain why it would be exponential. And then a little harder question, uh, what would the half-life of his cheese be? How long would it take for half of the cheese to be eaten?